Hey guys, this is Scott McKay from Thin Air Graphics. We're going to do a quick demo today on using my six pack of skull stencils that uh, just came out on the market in partnership with DeVilbis. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. Basically, I'm using these templates to do just a very simple, you know, skull painting. Um, you know, in this business, a lot of motorcycles, we do a lot of skull work. And uh, when you're doing this many per day, it's nice to have something you can just pick up and blow in some registration to get a really cool looking skull um, no matter what your ability is so I'm just starting with you know some black paint on a gray board a gray piece of metal and uh, just doing some very light shading around the edge outer edge of the skull the tops you know of the eye sockets and I'm flipping the template over and doing the other side this template's nice because it's um, symmetrical on both sides so you can use it as is. You can also pop the skull and separate it from the other side of the template by cutting a few tabs. You can just hold the skull in place and do it all in one shot. And all I've done here is just a very simple, simple amount of shading and around the edge of the template. And I, I'll put it back on and I'll go in for some more contrast, blow a little bit more black in there. Add some more mineral staining coming down, make it look like you know some water is pouring out of the skull, like maybe it was a fountain on a wall or something like that at one point in its life. And I'm going around the outer edge of the skull, doing a little core shadow, very minimal freehand here, just some light shading. You know, when I work, I like to work slowly and bring my color values up, my, my shadows down. So I'll start very light and then I'll continue to add more paint just to, you know, build the structure and not try to go in in one shot and nail it all at once. You know, as some of you guys have known, if you're recently new to airbrushing, it's very hard to take away work. It's very easy to keep adding more and more. So, you know, you definitely don't want to overwork it too fast. And I feel by just slowly working it, you'll get a better overall picture. And it won't look, over, won't look overwork at the end. Now I'm flipping to the look up template. Uh, the first one was actually called Head Down. And we're going to put him up in the upper left-hand corner. You know, same thing as the first. We're going to flip it and go to the right side. You know, just kind of making a little pile of skulls here. Now we're going to add Say Ah. This is one of my favorite ones. I like doing him. He works really good on front fenders of bikes and, you know, noses of the cars and things like that. And if you notice that the templates are different sizes, there's actually two different sizes of all the templates. There's six in each set. And uh, you know you can do the bigger one in the foreground, the smaller ones in the background. It'll give you some foreshortening and you know just a feeling of depth. And I'll go back in with the template and carve some more contrast to push those smaller skulls into the background more, keeping the head down skull in the foreground. Again, all I'm using here is just black. I haven't switched to any colors. Some of these templates, um, you know, like say ah, uh, also come with kind of bonus things around the edges. This one has like a broken glass edge, um, you know, broken concrete. You know, just same as the, the skull template, just blow in some registration. In this case, I moved it up like an eighth of an inch and sprayed it again to kind of give it a three-dimensional, you know, beveled look. You know, later on we're going to add a little bit more to the uh, the cracks and bring them up a little further. But you can see right here by itself it's a good piece. You know, if you were doing the, like a candy ghost job, you know, this would be great to uh, you know do some red candy over a silver base or tape out some flames. Um, you know, we're going to keep this as is. So what I'm using now is some of the some of the positive 
elements of the the template by going around the, like the tops of the eyelid, the eyebrows, and punching them out with some white. Uh, the top of the nose bridge, you know, the the bottoms of the teeth, just to kind of give it a little bit of light sourcing. Um, again, you know, not much freehand here. You know, just using the template as I go. I'm basically trying to add some contrast to it. Right now, I'm going around the edge of the the head, and then I'll, I'll blow in a light source right at the top of the skull. And it's real simple, just to get a nice overall look of the skull. Again, depending on your ability level, you can stop at any time. I'm gonna do the bottom of the eye socket. You know, understanding light sourcing is real key. Um, you know, practice it. Look at how light reflects off objects and you know the airbrush is great for this because you can suddenly bring in all those highlights we're going to put some eyes in there using these three circles we're going to go to just use the two of them and that's going to uh, you know give me that one sinister eyeball like he's just keeping an eye on you punch out the bottom of the nose bridge And I think you know, right now we've only been about you know just over five minutes, and we already got a really nice piece working. I'm gonna move some of the other skulls here and bring up some of the highlights on them. You know, bring up the, the teeth and the nose bridge of the say ah piece. bottom of the eye socket on both sides. Now these are really fun projects just to practice. Um, you can do them in so many different combinations. You know, the more freehand ability, a lot of times I'll, you know, slightly blow in a very light registration of one of these templates and then completely change it, completely gnarl it up, you know, add ears, add horns, add all sorts of stuff to it. Um, by the time it's done, it won't even look like you used a template. Um, it'll look like a complete original. So they're really great for adding, you know, elements to a bigger painting. You know, when you might have like a big Grim Reaper or something, have a lot of skulls around them or in the background of the clouds. Uh, they're really good for that. It saves you a ton of time as far as you don't have to sketch out every single one of it, you know, just for background filler. Or for smaller pieces like, you know, fenders or sides of gas tanks. These are great by themselves and, you know, doing this with some, you know, real fire coming off them or, you know, go as far as you want with them. But, you know, I really try to cater them so, you know, anyone from a, you know amateur who just started, who was just getting his feet wet with the airbrush to someone who's been working, you know, in this industry for a long time like myself, I'm going to go in and just add some highlighting around those cracks and you know, kind of punch them out a little bit more. Sorry for getting my shoulder in the way there. Black again, we'll carve some more shadowing here after we did the highlight, um, you know, the white, and just kind of sink back that eye and make those eye sockets a little deeper in the nose bridge. You can see the, the slow the slow process, I think, works a lot nicer, um, you know, ends up looking more realistic. It doesn't look so, you know, one-dimensional. You know, by working slow, you just get a chance to really, you know, work with your stuff and not have it you know, work against you. And that's pretty much it. That, that's pretty much a wrap up right now. And you know, depending on your ability, you can go freehand with more and more detail. Uh, this is what I did um, you know, towards the end, maybe another five minutes to get that look. Hope you enjoyed it.